Anipei brought to you by Digikey and Adafruit. This week it is Renaissance. 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 <laughs> Renaissance is a maker of microcontrollers and boards. And this week's we're going to be covering the RA series of microcontrollers. Um, they were just featured on digikey.com. Um, and even though we've never used uh, Renaissance chips, um, these chips are all um, ARM Cortex. I think they're M33s, M4s, maybe a few M0s and M7s. Uh, so if you're using other chips that are in the ARM Cortex family, it should be fairly easy to retarget your designs. And they've got some good stuff. Uh, in particular, you know, because I, you know, the, I have to pick one product out of the entire group. Uh, the RAM, RA4M1 is what I'm looking at. And uh, I'm looking at it because it's, as I'll show later, it's... Um, used in the the new upcoming Arduino Uno R4. So we'll go into the details of all this data sheet. There's just is a jam-packed uh, Cortex M4 chip. Um, Renaissance for people in the West who may not have used it, because again, it's not a huge brand, um, is a conglomerate, it's not a conglomerate, it's a, it's a merging of Hitachi, Mitsubishi Electric, and NEC. Um, these are Japanese silicon vendors, and they kind of merged forces. Uh, in a video that we actually showed before, it's really cool. It's, yeah, you can check it out on their YouTube. It's got the samurai who who like cuts through complexity and uh, deploys good silicon. Um, and the reason I was interested in looking at this is first off, it popped up on the digikey.com slash new uh, products listing. Um, even though it's not super new, it was kind of a featured product. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the same family of chips that's in the new Arduino Uno R4. And we signed up for the early access program and we're getting um, this chip. So we'll make sure that it works with all of our libraries. And you know, one of the things is that the Uno, the R4 is really changing directions from the previous versions of the Arduino Uno, which were based on 8-bit microcontrollers, such as the Atmega 8, 168, and 328. And those were 8-bit um, AVR chips with like 32K of RAM at the most, maybe 2K of, sorry, 32K of flash, 2K of RAM at the most. So why why move to um, this chip, the 32-bit uh, Cortex M4 RA4 uh, M1? And um, we'll look at it, but it's got a lot of good peripherals. Um, and it, one of the big things is, of course, it is 5-volt uh, compliant, um, as well as has native USB. So it's got... It's a really nice step up from the Napin microcontroller. And you know, looking at this, it's got a lot of um, peripherals and capabilities that you would expect from both the best of the 8-bit world and uh, the best of the Cortex world. Um, so the biggest thing, of course, is that this chip is 5-volt compliant. And not I don't mean like some STM chips, you can run them at 3.3 volts, and then you can kind of pipe 5 volts into one of the I.O. pins as long as it's powered. Um, you really can drive this whole thing at 5.5 volts, which is you know at max five volts nominal and that's quite unusual because again um pretty much every arm cortex chip we've seen has been three volts uh there are a few um chips i think you know uh microchip makes a sam c21 and that one is five volt compatible but doesn't have native usb so this kind of has um the best of of both worlds it's got that five volt logic capability and high current it's got some high current pins as well um, but the ARM Cortex M4 power. Um, the peripherals are really great on this chip. Um, for example, the ADC converter, you know, it's pretty common to have an AC con converter, but this one does 14 bit conversion. That's nice. Most top out at maybe 10 or 12. Um, it's also got a DAC, a 12 bit DAC, so that's kind of nice. Of course, there's DMA. Um, temperature sensor, sure. Comparator, sure. But there's also like op amps uh, built in, and there's four op amps that you can configure. Um, you know, and I think you can set gains and, and do inversions and um, set up stuff so your small signal analogs can be uh, then piped into the ADC. Um, for serial communication, that's your, your standard um, peripherals, I squared C, SPI, and UART. There's two of each, uh, which is cool. Um, so there's also SSIE, which I believe is just I2S. Uh, another thing that's really nice, it's got CAN. Not all Cortex chips have CAN bus natively. You'll, you'll need a transceiver, but the CAN module is built in, so that's kind of cool if you're interested in using this with uh, CAN bus networks because those are 5-volt um, logic networks, so you don't need like a transceiver with a separate boost converter because, again, you can power everything here off of 5 volts. 
Another a couple interesting things that, you know, you don't normally see on Cortex chips is got a segment LCD controller. So like LCDs that you see on calculators, um, you can run those directly. Uh, you don't need a separate chip. Very handy if you're doing a product where you want LCD, e even though a lot of times people use TFTs these days or OLEDs, there's still a lot of products that will use a segment LCD. And this makes sense. Uh, Renaissance makes a lot of chips that are used in white goods and a lot of white goods have LCDs. Uh, capacitive touch sensing unit, also very common in white goods because you don't want to have buttons that can you know mechanically be damaged. Capacitive touch um, will work through glass or plastic and can work with wa uh, waterproof things that are in the home, kitchen, or bathroom. Um, and of course, it's got the uh, native USB 2.0 full speed, you know, so that's your 12 megabits per second. Um, you can power directly from the USB port. And then there is a separate 3.3 uh, volt LDO, but it's internal. Um, it's just needed for the logic level signal link shifting for the D plus and D minus lines. Um, there's a few versions. All of them are going to have 256K of flash, 32K of RAM. Um, oh, I forgot to note, but they also have a 2K of like separate flash. So it's basically like EEPROM, um, separate than the main flash memory size. So you don't have to worry about, oh, you know, I want to store some non-volatile memory, but I don't, I want to make sure it's kept separate from the main code. Um, they provide a separate code area. It does come in a couple different packages, depending on how many GPIOs you want, um, up to 100 pins. Right now, you know, I saw in DigiKey in stock, at least, they definitely had the 48 and 64 and 40 pin versions, uh, QFN and uh, the LQFP as well. Um, another thing that you sent me that was kind of neat yeah. was um gadget renaissance which is a couple of years old it's not it's not a new thing um but they made a really cool like sakura pink themed dev boards for all of yeah. their popular chipsets and some were interesting like one of them was like the citrus board um where they're kind of middle left is specifically for use of the ruby language so i don't know if it has like an embedded ruby interpreter or it compiles from Ruby to microcode. There's like a kind of a Flora lily pad esque round board. Um, the GR Mango uses one of their high end chips and it's. You You're know, an investor in Arduino, Arduino now. I hope this is a new Arduino lineup. It'd be cool. <laughs> um, the, the Kurumi is a little bit like a, a Teensy or a Pro Micro. And then the Mango is Raspberry Pi ish. And then um, the Lychee uh, and the Peach are kind of Arduino ish size so the yeah, the, is actually our Arduino the IDE level. they they you know they made some changes so it's pink yeah it's pink and it's Arduino compatible they you know they forked it and and tweaked it to make yeah. it uh work with their boards could be that they actually need to change a couple things for their SDK um another thing that's interesting is um it's, it's a different chip than the Uno R4 by the way so this is an older yeah project and it looks like it even had uh this chip has native ethernet which is why they uh stuck an RJ45 on there as well as USB host. So this is a quite an advanced board. Um, they also have a web compilation system, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, so I opened it up and it's like, yeah, you can compile from within um, the web browser. And I guess you download the bin file and you can drag it over like the bootloader. And it's got like this kind of Sakura themed to it. And then the packaging also is from this artist. Um, I couldn't find any photos of it online that I could use, but the, the packaging for this board is also very beautiful. Uh, from a Japanese artist and has like these Japanese uh, themes. So um, that's a separate project than this, but I thought it would be interesting to, you know, if you were interested in the, the family of boards uh, and you want to try their online compilation system, um, check it out with the Sakura chipset. Can you go back one? It uses the uh, the RX 6N, 633N. And a lot, again, a lot of this stuff doesn't really penetrate into the Western market, but it's always good to have competition. And, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine who just came back from Tokyo and um, she said, you know, when you're in Japan, everything is just a little bit nicer. Um, <laughs> everything true. is just like five to 10 percent better than it would be in the U.S. And so, um, you know, I think the documentation and usage and and I like that, you know, the board, they could have gotten away with future, sorry, fewer peripherals on the RA4 series. But I think they're like, oh, yeah, also LCD, also Canvas, also, you know, DMA, et cetera um so oh goodness sorry go back one uh so the um it's called the full part name is the r7 fa 4 m1 a series uh, there's a couple so for example this is the qfn there's also the qfp which is the highlight um there's also a dev board for that ra4 m1 series if you do not want to 
wait for the um uno r4 i'm sure it'll come out soon but if you're like i just want something immediately tomorrow uh they do have a dev kit for this chip which comes with a Sega j-link debugger with a separate usb so you can like debug like a full you know gdb debugging system um as well as uh the native usb and it has like a couple peripherals on there like capacitive touch and potentiometer and push button and also it's got um the current sensing area so you can like remove the jumper Available on Jujigi. That's right. It's in stock. I'm so excited that we can do INPI and the parts are available. So um, check out Jujigi, you know, as they're doing more with uh, Winnesauce. And I think, again, it's good. Like, even though I don't know many people who've used these chips, um, it's always good to have more competition. I think, you know, we've we've had plenty of European and Western companies um, and American companies make chips based on the Cortex standard. Uh, why not check out what's going on in Japan? So, I mean, I'm going to be